Hey guys, for the past week I've been using the $200 a month cloth code max plan and there's only one problem with it, but it's a quite serious one. And I found out how to solve it for me, so today I'm teaching you how I did it so you can do it too. This is not gonna be a video explaining the basics of cloth code. There's already a bunch of amazing videos out there that have helped me out in the beginning. I'm gonna link a video of one of my favorite YouTubers who did an amazing video of his workflow using cloth code, so I don't think I have anything to add to that. But I hope that with this video I can improve that workflow just a little bit and help some of you out there. I'm using Cloud Code in Cursor and I'll also tell you why, but let's get started first. So here we are in Cursor. If you've got Cloud Code installed, you should just be able to hit Command Escape and a new window opens, so we don't need this chat window anymore. And yes, I trust this new demo project. This is just an empty Python project, so we can get started working in here. Let me just start with a very simple request. Write a Python script that takes two integers and adds them together like this. We see our new file and we're just going to trust it that this is correct. It looks correct to me. So now what is the issue with this? If we now ask it for another change, like actually without changing the function name, please make it multiply the numbers. This is wrong, but do it anyways. So this is just forcing an error on cloud code's part. Now, this is something I would normally never do but uh, cloud code sometimes can make mistakes or misunderstand you a little bit or go off and start editing lots of files that you didn't ask it to. And in that moment, there's the problem that you need to revert to the previous state. The problem here is that we cannot really revert right now. I mean, it's only a small change and I could make the change myself, but if it's touching so many files and I didn't commit to Git in between, now I'm lost because even if I scroll here, there's not this nice revert button that you know from cursor where you can just go back and try again. So that's something that's really been annoying for me and has been kind of stopping me from using cloud code to its full potential. Actually, I got inspiration from Peter Levels, who you might know from Twitter, who is like a very famous indie hacker. He's famous for making like thousands, like tens of thousands of commits every, I don't know, every month or every year. And that's because he has a shortcut to commit. Basically, he presses like two or three buttons at the same time and there's a new commit with all the changes staged and committed and it also gets pushed right away and then goes live on his websites. I don't want to go quite that far here, but basically what we're gonna do here is set up a shortcut that if you hit it after every change that Cloud Code makes, basically you're staging and committing all the changes and you can just revert. So we're basically forcing this kind of frequent commits that uh, we don't need with cursor because we can just revert, but this doesn't exist here in cloud code. Maybe they will implement it later, but it doesn't exist as of now. But there's one thing I want to mention, and that is that Peter Level's commits are always just an X. So he has thousands of commits that are all the same, and there's basically no way to understand what's going on without investing a lot of time. But since we're still using cursor right here, we still have access to its AI capabilities. And one of them is to AI generate a commit message. So I've added that to the workflow. So basically, what we're trying to do is create a shortcut that stages all commits, then AI generates a commit message and then commits. And basically for every change that cursor makes, you just hit the shortcut and then you have a new commit that actually makes sense and where you can just read the commit messages and understand where the change happened that you didn't like and then revert. So how do we do that? Here in cursor, I just hit command shift P and here you can already see in the top open keyboard shortcuts JSON. If it doesn't show up for you, you can just type here open keyboard shortcuts JSON. And if we open that, we can set custom shortcuts and this is where we're gonna add our new shortcut. I'm not actually sure how to do this on Linux or Windows, but I'm sure if you Google it, you're gonna find it out right away. Here, I've actually already added this shortcut. It's this second one. So if I hit Command M, it's gonna open the Git view and stage all changes, then generate a commit message and then commit and go back to the file explorer. Maybe there is something I could improve in this flow, so I'm open to your suggestions, but for me, it's been good enough. Uh, but as you'll see, the command is actually, it's calling an extension, which is called multi-command. Because as you can see here, usually only a single command is supported and I don't want to hit it and then stage all changes and then hit another shortcut to generate the message and another one to commit. I want this all to be seamless and uh, be done at the same time. So what you have to do is go over to the extensions here, search for the multi-command extension. I mean, it's already installed for me, but you can see it here by Ryuta46 or however you want to pronounce that. And once you've installed that, I'm not sure if you have to restart cursor. I think not, but if it doesn't work, maybe try that. 
And yeah, then you can add uh, this uh, snippet, which I'm also going to leave in the description. And basically after that, when you hit Command M, it's going to commit your changes. So let's see how that works in real life. Let me delete this new file here and move it to trash and then open cloud code again. And I'm just gonna ask it again, like uh, create a Python script that takes two integers and sums them up. So now I'm happy with the changes that cloud code made and I can just hit command M and you can see it switches to the Git tab and it's generating a commit message and now it's back in the Explorer. So if we see what it actually did, we see a new commit here, which says add some integers.py to calculate the sum of two integers with user input, which is exactly what the script does. So now we cannot lose this progress and uh, we can continue working on new changes. So now if I make a mistake again and I tell it to change the addition in the fun function to multiplication, but don't change the function name, we are adding a bug on purpose. We're kind of forcing this bug again, but just imagine that cloud code goes off the rails and actually does something wrong. So now we have this error here where the wrong result would be returned. And yeah, basically, if we didn't commit, then we couldn't go back now and we would lose a bunch of progress. But since we committed, we can just discard the changes now. So I'm going to do that here. Yeah, I'm sure. And basically now I'm back to the correct version again with the plus. So my workflow is that after every single change that I'm happy with or that I think I might be happy with, I just hit command M and I can even after committing, uh, you know, I can just uh, revert those commits and go back anyway. So I don't need to make sure that these changes are good. I can just hit the shortcut very frequently. And uh, if it's not a good change, I go back anyways. So basically this has solved my big issue with Claude code that I kept losing a bunch of progress by Claude just completely going off the rails. And now Claude is just a joy to use. So if you're using Claude code this might be a nice change for you if you've been frustrated about this try it it works really well i'm happy with the changes i've made if you try this please let me know i'd love to know if i've helped somebody out there out with this and yeah this was all for this week's video i hope it was helpful if there's any other topics that you might want to learn about or anything you're curious about about cloud code or cursor please leave it in the comments i'm happy to make a video on that if i know a little bit about it i'm also still at the very beginning of my youtube journey so if this has been helpful to you please consider leaving a like and subscribing it would really mean a ton to me and other than that keep shipping and see you guys next week